Hey there. Well, this is Chef AJ and I had a change of plans because of the torrential rain. I'm not driving three hours to my friend's house, so now I have to make dinner. So what am I gonna do? Well, what I'm gonna do is make what I showed on my Thanksgiving webinar with some modifications. So, as you know, if you ever watch me, everything starts with an onion. So here I have my Pampered Chef pan. How do I light this fire? There we go. So I'm gonna preheat it. I've got it on high. And I'm gonna let that get a little bit hot. I've got my onion. I've already chopped it. Usually I buy the already chopped onion. It's a 10 ounce bag from Trader Joe's, but because I waited so long to do my shopping, they were sold out. And so I had to cut the onion myself, which I don't like to do. That's why my nose is running, because when you cut an onion, at least for me, I'm so sensitive, it makes me cry. So uh, this, is a, this is a sweet onion. I prefer the sweet onion, but any onion is good. Maui onion, a yellow onion. I've never really done a, a YouTube live before. I can't tell if people are there because I don't see any comments, but I'll figure it out. This is different. I'm used to doing Facebook lives. I was testing a new technology earlier that supposedly went to YouTube and Facebook, but people were saying it was pixelated. So I'm just trying with my phone. Okay, so how do we know that the pan is heated? Well, you take a little bit of water and you go like that. And I don't know if you can see these little beads, but when they dance around like this, that means my pan is hot enough. And so now I can put my onion in. And you don't need any oil, you don't need any broth. I'm using a non-stick pan. If you're not comfortable using non-stick, just use any kind you like, stainless steel, green pan, scan pan, ceramic pan. And you really don't have to add any liquid unless it starts to stick, which it won't in a non-stick pan. But I've got my water right here next to me for when it's ready. I'm always going to add some garlic. I use this really cool tool from Tupperware. It's in my Amazon store. You just pull the chain and chop it more finely than I think anybody really could using a knife. Or I don't care for those garlic presses because the little holes, it gets stuck. I'm not going to stir it around at first. I'm just going to move it. It's going to be on the pan, and this is how I'm going to get it to brown quickly and even caramelize if I have time. Oh, what I'm making is a stuffed squash. The original recipe in my book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, is a stuffed acorn squash, but they were out of acorn squash, so I'm using butternut squash, which taste-wise is delicious, but it's a it, little hole for stuffing is a lot smaller, so you have to take out a lot more of the flesh in order to get it work, but it'll taste fine. You could do kabocha. Kabocha is a little bit thick. I've tried that. Acorn would be my preference, but I think butternut is going to be great. I've never done a YouTube live from the phone, so I guess maybe if there are comments, they don't show up. Oh well, I'll find out later if it works. I can always answer comments later. Tomorrow I'm going to be announcing my Black Friday special, so if you're not on my mailing list, maybe you want to get on it today. It's my name, Chef AJ, followed by the word website, spelled out, chefajwebsite.com or eatonprocess.com. While I'm waiting, I'm having a cup of tea. And I love this kind of tea. It's an organic tea from the Good Earth. It's caffeine-free. It's called Sweet and Spicy, I believe. In my very favorite mug, I got an homage to Dr. McDougall. Says the fat you eat is the fat you wear. It's available in my Cafe Press store. Nice size mug, by the way. And, oh, I think a comment just popped up, but it went away. So, I'm doing this myself. My husband's busy getting ready for our Black Friday special. So, I can start moving it around a little bit, and you can see it's starting to brown. But really, what you need to do this is patience. Patience and time. Wouldn't it be great if they already sold pre-caramelized onions? You know, I do a style of cooking called SOS-free or SOFAS-free, sugar oil salt-free or sugar oil flour alcohol salt. And because of that, it's really important that you use really delicious savory ingredients, good spices, good herbs. So if you can't have onion, it's really hard, in my opinion, to do SOS-free cooking. I have a video on YouTube with a panel of three other chefs where we talk about how to get flavor without 
sugar, fat, and salt, but I believe that everything starts with an onion and then is only enhanced by garlic. So, and onions are so cheap. I mean, gosh, in Costco you can get, you get golf, you know, softball size onions, like 12 of them for like, you know, five bucks, 99 cent store. You can get them like 10 of them for a dollar. It's crazy. So I just kind of move this around. And you know, if it seems like it's sticking, because not all of you guys are going to use nonstick, and I respect that. I've used this pan for 20 years, and I'm almost 60. I've had no complications. But either way, what you do is every now and then, you just add a little bit of water. And that's going to get it nicely browned. So you want all that flavor. Onions are such a great addition to anything you make, whether it's a bean burger or a no bean burger. They're so delicious. And I feel bad for people who can't eat them. Some people avoid them that don't really need to, but they're so healthy for you. They're so good. And they make everything delicious. And they're so much more mild and sweet when you cook them. I mean, it's not that I would never have a raw onion in my salad, but they, they just are so much more flavorful, in my opinion, when they're cooked. If you haven't tried my oven roasted ratatouille, that's a, a delicious recipe that uses onion. And then I can just add a little bit more water. I'm doing this at high heat just because it takes less time. You can see how quickly these brown on high heat with a good pan. I always tell people, get the best pan you can afford. I know some people like the waterless cookware, like PCRM, Coach, and Marilyn Sharon McCray, but that's very, very expensive for most people to get. Even one piece can be, you know, several hundred dollars. So get the best pan you can afford. A True North, they use stainless steel cookware. I have friends that use the Copper Chef, the green pan, the scan pan. But I really love this pan, mainly because of the size, because it's, it is basically a rock pan. It's called a saute pan. Unfortunately, we don't make it anymore. I used to be a Pampered Chef representative 20 years ago, and I still am using this wonderful pan, which is in great condition. There's no mix or anything. So this is basically ready. You can see. Look at that. So now I'm going to add my garlic. You don't want to add garlic too soon because it can burn. So I've got my chopped garlic. And I just use one of those pads from Trader Joe's. It comes already peeled. You can't have too much garlic, in my opinion. And garlic, like onion, is so much better when it's cooked. Oops, that's the bell. I shouldn't have rang that. That's to tell people dinner is ready. But uh, garlic can burn, so you don't want to add it too soon in the cooking process. So I'm making my wild rice stuffing with apples and cherries. And every now and then I just add a little water. You could use broth, but you know, the truth is, is I believe my recipes are so flavorful, you don't need the broth. Unless you make it yourself, it could be three, even four dollars a box, and then you've got the packaging. I don't think, unless you're just drinking it as a beverage, the broth makes really that much difference, and it's just, in my opinion, too expensive. I make it myself in my Instant Pot from scraps. I have a recipe, actually two recipes on YouTube where I show you how easy it is to do. So you won't be sauteing the garlic quite as long as the onion. I could probably turn the heat down now. And I will turn it down to medium. I'm cooking on a gas stove. My whole life up until 10 months ago was electric because I always lived in an apartment and I didn't have a choice. So I had to use what they had, which is electric. So it's been a bit of a learning curve for me working on a gas stove. And I'm so used to electric. Even when I worked at the restaurant, I was a pastry chef. So, I, you know, really, other than if I was going to melt chocolate or something, I really it didn't matter that it, it was gas or electric because it was mostly baking or making raw desserts. So, okay, so that's looking really, really good. Well, I see a comma, but they go away. I'm just starting to kick the oil. Very good. It'll be good for your health. And if you're overweight, good for your waistline. If you've got acne, it'll be great for your skin. So now I'm going to add my apples and I chop them in this wonderful machine. You can find it in my Amazon store called the Vidalia Chop Wizard. I have it in Amazon store. It's about $20 at Bed Bath & Beyond. You can always use a coupon. Usually I shred it for this recipe, but I thought, you know, it might be fun just for a change to use chopped apples instead. 
So just gonna stir these around. This is a wild rice stuffing with cherries and apples if you tuned in late. So because I didn't know that I was gonna be staying home for Thanksgiving till like the last minute last night when the weather forecast came in, I did last minute shopping at Trader Joe's. They were sold out of everything. So I couldn't find Italian parsley, I couldn't find arugula. So normally there'd be some green in here, but not today. So we're just gonna get these apples a little bit softer. And this is gonna be baked in the oven, so I'm not worried about it, even if the apples weren't completely cooked or caramelized. They have a little bit of crunch, that would be fine. And again, I only add, I turned the heat down, but I only add water every now and then, or even not at all. The apple that I'm using is called the Envy Apple. It's my very favorite apple. I believe it's a cross between a Gala and, or Gala, and is it a Jana Gold or a John? I'm not sure, but it is really the best apple I've ever had. It's the envy of all apples, in my opinion. My second favorite apple is a yellow one called the Opal. They are a little bit more expensive, but I think they're worth it. They're always crunchy. They're never mealy. You can get them organic or not organic. I've seen them at Costco, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods. Mm, this is, right here, you could just eat this. This looks so amazing. Not a lot of seasoning in this. You could put salt-free seasoning if you want. Benson's, I'm just gonna add a little bit of an organic poultry seasoning. I don't really measure. I'd probably a teaspoon of what the book says, but you know, I don't measure stuff. I mean, I do if I'm baking, but I don't bake very much because the flavor's coming. I mean, there's so much flavor from the onion and the garlic, you know, spices aren't really that crucial in this dish. I mean, I would have liked just for color Usually I put in a cup of chopped parsley or arugula or spinach, but I mean, I do have broccoli, but we're gonna have a side dish of Brussels sprouts, so no need to do that. Mm, this is smelling amazing. All I can tell you is it's not dinner time quite yet here, a little bit more. And it's kind of stuck in the thing. And then what I'm gonna add next is my wild rice. Oh, I keep turning the oven on next again, but I keep doing it against it. I'm really turn that off. I have double ovens here, and, and you know the truth is, mostly I just use my gravel for everything. So there we go. I pre-cook the wild rice in advance, it just makes it easier. I always have wild rice or rice anyway on hand, already cooked, usually several cups in the freezer. Wild rice is being used here because this is a stuffing and I wanted it very toothsome. But I suppose you could use another grain, millet, brown rice, basmati rice, even quinoa. But I love the toothsomeness and the hardiness, especially in a fall dish of the wild rice. It goes great with the apples. So somebody once asked if you could use pears in this. And you know, you can, but I find pears just don't hold up as much. They, they all seem to get a little bit mushy for my taste. Doesn't this look beautiful? My goodness, who needs sugar, oil, salt? The processed food or animal products and beautiful, beautiful dinner. All right, and then I'm gonna put in my dried fruit. This is, of course, optional. These are cherries. These are unsulfur and unsweetened dark cherries. And that did not take very long. That is my stuffing. Now, what I'm going to do I'm gonna have to leave the camera for a second. I'm gonna turn my heat off now. And then I'm gonna bring some other things over here. Oh, you know what I forgot? You know what I was gonna do? Is I was gonna put mushrooms in. But it looks like that's a little too late now. Well, well, well. How do you like them apples? Because originally this called for celery and carrots and they were out of mirepoix. Guess what? Too late. So you know what I'm gonna do with these? I'm gonna put some pepperoni spice on them and cook them in my air fryer as a side dish. My husband loves pepperoni mushrooms. Oh well. So over here, I have the butternut squash. The butternut squash from the squashes that I'm stuffing, which I'm gonna show you right now. What I did is I cooked, cooked these in an instant pot to get them soft. Let's see if you 
you can see that. So these are the butternut squashes. But first, before I can stuff them, I need to mix the stuffing in with this. Now, when you're doing this with acorn squash, you don't have to do this because acorn squash has such a big hole, you can just put the stuffing right in. But with butternut squash, it has such a tiny hole. If I did that, then I would basically just have the smallest amount of stuffing. And the stuffing is, you know, it's like the, the funnest, the best part. So that's why I took some of the squash out to do this. In my first book on process, there's a recipe for a stuffed butternut squash, and it's the same idea. So I'm just gonna mix all of this into the bowl with the squash, and then I'm gonna mix it up really good, and it's gonna make it easier to stuff than if I were just to do the rice. Let me see if I can just lift this up, yep. And if there's leftover stuffing, you can just bake it in a Pyrex, or you can get more squash and make more and stuff it. I, I did uh, four very large butternut squashes. So let me get this, darn, I feel bad that I forgot the mushroom. I knew there was a reason they were there. You see, I, I, didn't, they, they, I couldn't get celery or carrot. They were out of it at Trader Joe's, so I went with mushrooms. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix this together. Oh, you could just eat this. You don't even need to stuff it. You could literally just bake this in a casserole. You know, winter squashes are not only one of the healthiest things you can eat in terms of starch, but one of the most satisfying and nutritious. And you know, when it comes to caloric density, which is a subject that I teach in my book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, and in the Real Truth About Weight Loss Summit, it's one of my favorite topics. Squashes are lower in caloric density than even bananas. They're about 200 calories a pound. Bananas are about 400. So knock yourself out this time of year with the Hubbard and the acorn and the butternut and the delicata and the, uh, what else, the kabocha. Acorn is so good. They're all good. And I love cooking them in a pressure cooker more than an oven because then I get this really delicious broth at the bottom that tastes like nectar that I drink. So that you can see how nice this is looking. You just want to make sure it's fully incorporated. You know, I'm kind you know, they say there's no accidents. You know, may, maybe mushrooms weren't, would not have been the right profile in here, not necessary. So like I say, my husband will be very happy to have a side of pepperoni mushrooms with dinner. That's his favorite and they're so easy to make in the air fryer. So I want to get this all fully incorporated. And almost there, and then I'm gonna stuff the squash. Then I'm gonna bake it on a baking sheet that's covered with a sill pad. That's a nonstick silicone baking mat. I don't like to use parchment paper because I think about the environment, and every time you use it, you know, you can't reuse it. Whereas I have literally had the same sill pad for over 30 years. I have new ones now because I need more than one, but they do last. You know, they darken a little because of the baking, but they're absolutely fine. And they're oven safe to 450 and nobody really cooks higher than that anyway. Baking is generally done at about 350, roasting at about 400. So there we go. Looks like it's pretty well incorporated now. I just got a little couple of, probably should have, mash the squash before doing this. I don't see why you couldn't do this with sweet potatoes even. It's just they don't have enough surface area probably to make it an entree for people. So now let's get that last bit of butternut squash. Oh, so good. We're going to have a feast. We're going to have some cranberry relish with it. I made a pecan pie for my husband. My a world's healthiest pecan pie from my new book, A Date with Dessert. And now I'm going to get my squash back right here. Hopefully you can move this over so you can see it. There we go. And then I just start filling the hole of all the squashes. You want to fill it evenly. And it's okay if it mounds up on the top. The first thing I do, I do the first layer to get everything in. And then normally I serve, you know, if people, you know, that's the beauty of the whole food plant-based sofas free lifestyle. You don't have to weigh and measure your food. It's really all you can eat, especially if you don't eat those added overt fats. So 
most people though eat one. I mean, there's some people that just don't eat very much and they eat a half and I don't know how they eat that little, but you can have as much as you want. So, there we go, it's such a pretty fall dish. We're lucky in California because we get winter squash pretty much all year round. Maybe not all of the flavors, but I've seen butternut and, del and uh, um, kombucha at least all year round. Delicata maybe not so much. So there we go. We'll see. I do wish there was a little green just for color, you know. Like I said, I usually put very finely chopped arugula, spinach, or parsley in. Really just more for color than anything else. And putting that back, actually, there we go. We'll probably have a little stuffing left. I hope you guys are having a happy Thanksgiving. I know some of you probably have already had your meal. We're doing our meal later, probably at about 5 o'clock Pacific time, because then we're going to go see the Mr. Rogers movie right afterwards. Everybody says it's a great movie. There we go. So we're just going to make it so that it's all even. And I would probably bake these for at least 30 minutes at 350, 375. You can go as high as 400 if you're in a hurry. So I'm going to start mounding it on the top. And then th what's going to happen is the rice is going to get real crunchy, the, the, at least the top part, so it's going to be really, really yummy. And then, of course, you can eat the shell. These are organic. You could even eat the skin because it is organic. And you can eat the skin of the squash, especially the kabocha squash. I, I, it makes me so sad when people don't eat that green skin. That's the best part. So the dried fruit, the cherries, I cut in half just because then... It's like you get more of them, and you know they are fairly large, so you don't have to do that if you don't want. And like I said before, normally when I do the apples, I just grate them. But since the onion cutter was already out, I'm like, ah, I don't want to dirty another thing and have to wash the grater. So it was really out of laziness that I cubed them this time. But it doesn't matter. This one's actually bigger, so this person who will probably be me will get one with more stuff more stuff in and of course this is gluten free because there's not not using any bread or any flour I don't use any bread or flour products anyway haven't for many many years I've been following a sugar-free lifestyle since July 6 2003 and then oil and salt beginning on August 1st 2008 and then flour for at least 2012. Oh, not that I was eating flour ever before, but I did sometimes have things like tortillas or salt-free Ezekiel bread back in the day, but nothing since January 2nd, 2012, when I started my ultimate weight loss journey to lose these 50 pounds and keep them off now for quite a long time after being overweight or obese for over 50 years. I've been vegan for over 42 years, but for the first 26 years, I was a junk food vegan. So you can see how pretty these are. Maybe if I can find some parsley flakes in my pantry, I'll, I'll sprinkle them over the top just to get that little bit of green. And that's that. And when we serve it with the cranberry relish, which will be beautiful red, it's going to look amazing. And then I'll come back and well, I'll say, do another live, show you how I eat it. But that's uh, I'm sure you guys have better things to do on Thanksgiving Day. So very there we have it. Didn't take very long to make our beautiful stuffed butternut squash with a gluten-free wild rice, apple, and cherry stuffing. So thanks so much for watching. I'm really here. It's just that it's hard to get me. So you got my kale shirt on. Get me and the food on. So have a happy, healthy Thanksgiving. Take care.